ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Saiful Bahri Ben Yusof. Okay, now, uh, my topic uh, is about balanced mindset. And perhaps I'm not going to focus on educators alone, but more on the students. Okay, so hopefully, um, if you can see the cover, don't judge a book by cover. So perhaps I hope that, let's hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Is that fine? Okay, now let's start with something. So when I was given this task to talk about balanced mindset, I was wondering what could I offer to the audience. And perhaps when I think a lot about what to put on the slide, and now I'm giving you from my perspective based on the three dimensions. Evidence, literature, theory, stories, reports, and my own, rep uh, uh, my own observation and research so far in my life for the past 10 years. Okay? Now, so today's presentation is about my perspective towards what we mean by balanced mindset. Okay, let's start with something. So my perspective now is about human intelligence. Okay, please guess how many form of human intelligence do we have in our set? One, two, three, four, five. What do you know so far? IQ, EQ, SQ, and the other rest of you. Okay, so, mm, so let's see what has, you know, researcher has talked about this so far. And in the early of 20th century, one of the researchers coined intellectual quotient, or we call it IQ. So this is an early 20th century, it's about 19, you know, 1912. And when looking at the human intelligence, the are four abilities. One is about to learn from experience. Remember, our human intelligence learn from experience. One. The second one is about adapt to new situation. It means that we have the, the adaptability ability to new situation and we learn from that. The, four, the third one is about understand and handle abstract concept. That's why we can understand so many things in our life. And we are looking at things we understand differently. And different individuals will have a different perspective on certain concepts. Remember that. That is our human ability. And the last one is to use whatever the knowledge we gain from whatever the resources to manipulate our environment. This is something the basic ability of human intelligence. And the first one that has been coined is IQ. And the IQ, I think you already know about that. It's about the knowledge, about intellectual, it's about thinking skills as well as cognitive capacity. And for the past eight years after that, people are talking about IQ, IQ, and IQ for the past eight years. And in 1990, researchers found that IQ alone is not enough because they have seen that the highest IQ people still suicide, you know, still have a mental problem, still having a lot of emotional disorder and many more. So it seems that in the career performance as well, IQ is not the alone predictor. So in 1990, at the end of the 20th century, this guy, Salovey and Mayer, introduced emotional intelligence. And the first definition of emotional intelligence is about the ability to express, perceive, understand, motivate, control, and regulate our own emotion. So after eight years, people just realize emotional intelligence is important for the care environment as well as to prevent certain mental disorder. Huh, what else? And 1995, I think, from Musta already mentioned just now, it's about Goldman work. You know, Goldman have put emotional level into a different level, which is in the workplace, emotional intelligence. It's a very thick book by Daniel Goldman. 
And basically, we can summarize for the Goldman work is about two competencies related to emotional. Personal emotional intelligence, social emotional intelligence. But the research found something that IQ and EQ is not enough because we can see that human not being a person, there will be imbalance in the world life. They do not know what to do in their life. They are jumping around, suiciding themselves, and many more. And depression increasing, anxiety increasing, and many more. So researcher in early 21st century by Zoha and Marshall have come up with a book connecting SQ, spiritual quotient, in 2000, in early 21st century. And how they define the spiritual quotient. This is the first definition. Ability to assess our deepest meaning, value, purposes, and motivation. It means that nowadays, why we are here in this world? What is the purpose of our life? And many more. And this is where the values, ethics, morality, attitudes, beliefs, spirituality, integrity, humility comes into the picture because of this guy's work. And the Western now realize that how important they ask you to create human beings. So now we have IQ, we have EQ, we have SQ. What do we do not have so far? Which Q still living behind? Any wise guess? <coughs> do you have the other Q on top of the three Q? Okay, now let me give you a clue. Then let me make a wise guess in terms of the other form of human intelligence that everybody must have in order to survive in the future. This is the clue. Okay? This is the future. Future is about human techno interaction. So can you guess what is the other cue that every human being must have? Uh, what? LQ. Okay, queue up. <laughs> LQ, any other queue that you think the human must have? Long queue. <laughs> oh, maybe at the car you just know, yes, a really long, long queue. Okay, so the other queue is we must have this the techno portion. Ah, there is the other queue that will make you survive in the future. And how it is defined is on the ability for us to leverage on technology to enhance and enrich our IQ, EQ, and SQ. Okay, so we have completed the other form, four Qs already. Now everyone must Q to learn more. Okay, now let's go another step. You know, just a case study, you know. Uh, <laughs> is, that, is that your good friend? I shall put your picture rather than your friend. But let, let's uh, just have a reflection. And when I was looking for an uh, example, a good example of the 4Q, I'm looking at this guy. You know, I'm looking at this guy. And when I go through the background, looking at how this guy you know, articulate the thinking, how balance the mindset, and many more. And I come to conclusion that, yes, this guy having the four Q. Anyone that disagree with me, please. No, I don't agree. He's my enemy, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Seems everybody in agreement. That's good. No objection, isn't it? No objection. Okay, now, let's look at the other. This is a noble profession, but... Hmm. Okay. Okay. Can you see the difference now? Both of them having high IQ. But unfortunately, they are using the TQ, EQ, SQ differently. Which I think that there are no EQ, SQ, or TQ. So I think that's make difference between which graduates or which educators do you want to produce at the end of the day. Definitely the other the positive. 
Okay, so when we talk about balance, from human intelligence perspective, we need all the three. Remember that. Now, the other thing that I would like to convey here is connecting the ties for balance mindset. What are the ties? It's about techno caution. It's about intelligent caution. It's about emotional caution. And the last one is about spiritual caution. So connecting all the ties. So remember, when you look at, you look at the ties, please remember this diagram. Ties mean something for balance mindset from the human intelligence perspective. And the question we may now is about how to connect the time so that it's function well and hopefully we can have ourselves a balanced mindset. Okay. The first one, perhaps before I um, you know, reveal what are the strategies that I come across from many literatures, many success stories, many story books, many observations, mass media, YouTube, and many more. Okay, please take this as proposal. It's not a definite answer. Okay, this is just proposal based on my perspective. Okay, and you may disagree, and you may agree with whatever I propose. Is that okay? Make it clear. Okay, because it's strategies that has not been reported so far, but it's based on the evidence. So the first strategy to connect the ties is about reflective learning. Okay, so what is a reflective learner? So they are actually, they are person who keep on learning. One, keep on learning. The second one is about reflect on what happened and they learn from that experience. Okay, and then learn lesson from the experience, either from the success or from the failure. And the last one is they think how to do things differently to move on. And I think we have so many examples just now in the morning, how they move on and how they think differently to ensure that they are becoming better and better. So that's the first one. The second one is about resourcefulness. What do we mean by that? It's about adaptable and creative in the way we make use of surrounding all the resources we have to achieve the results or to overcome difficulties. So it seems that consistently from the literature, those we are, who are resourceful are very much connecting in terms of, in terms of the time. The third one, self-control. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, we have mentioned a lot. We need to be so much patient because we have so many patterns. I borrow from, I think, the previous speaker. We have so many hackers as well. Not hackers, but hackers as well. So we should be in control in any situation and the pause is very, very important here. Remember that. It's very aligned with human intelligence perspective. And last but not least, growth mindset. Ah, okay. What do we mean by growth mindset in balanced mindset? It's about okay, having belief that we can learn more and more if we are ready to learn, we open for change and keep on practicing. So there are the four strategies that I come across consistently, either from success story, from literatures, from reviews, from theories, from evidence, consistent. We are talking about the four strategies to connect the time. And to conclude, this is our DNA for balanced mindset. What are those? We need to find ways that best suit us to ensure that we connect the ties and perhaps the strategy that can help to connect everything is becoming reflective learners, resourceful, self-control and growth mindset. I think that is my slide. And with that, thank you for listening and for your attention.